Hi, this is Jody from mcpactions.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to batch process using the MCP Fusion set. If you've never batch processed before, batch processing is where you take an action and you're able to apply it to a bunch of photos all at once. Now you don't want to bog down your system too much, so you don't want to do this to thousands of photos at once, but you can definitely do it to dozens of photos at once and it will cut down your editing time dramatically. Now my recommendation is usually while you do this to leave your photo open for editing. How we're going to do this today is I'm going to actually show you with the most hardy action from the MCP Fusion set, which is called Color Fusion Mix and Match. So go ahead and open your set with the folder here, and then you're going to scroll down to MCP Color Fusion. Now you will notice when you get to Color Fusion that it has a little box, a red box with little dots inside. None of the other actions, the color actions, have that because all of those are batch processable from the get-go. But if you want to actually be able to mix and match the looks while you batch process, your best bet's going to be to actually run Color Fusion Mix and Match. It has a stop in the action to tell you how to use the action for the first few times. But once you learn that, you will open up the little action by clicking on the little arrow here. And then you're going to scroll all the way down to the end of the action. It is a very long action, so it will take a second. When you get down to where it says stop, and you'll see there's a box there as well, you're going to just uncheck. There's a little check mark. Just uncheck it. That way the stop is still available for the future, but it will not run when you run this action, when you play the action. So we're going to come back up here just and collapse it. And then we're going to go ahead and batch process. How you do that is you come under your file menu and go file, automate, batch. Okay, file, automate, batch. When you do this, it will pop open the action that you had open most recently. However, I'm going to actually mess that up for you here and I'll pick something else. So you would come in here where it says set and you would pick what set that you want. So for our purposes today, it would be MCP Fusion. Then, where it says Action, we're going to drop down and pick Color Fusion Mix and Match. You could do the exact same thing with Black and White Fusion Mix and Match and take out the last stop in that action. Now we've got Color Fusion Mix and Match here, and we're going to go ahead where it says Source, and we're going to pick Folder. If you have your photos open already that you want to run this on, then you would go ahead and instead of clicking Folder, you would click Open Files. We're going to click folder and then you're going to choose the folder. So we click choose and we're already in that folder here. You'll see it says batch folder, but if we weren't, you would come under here first where it says desktop and then you would go to batch folder. So wherever you have, it's not actually called batch folder. It's whatever folder you want to do your batch processing on. So you might have it called anything you want. You know, it could be called the name of a group of people that you took pictures of or a family name, etc. And then you're going to click choose. And once you click choose, you'll see it will populate in there the whole path that it needs. And then from there, you're going to click the destination. I recommend, as I said before, clicking none. None will keep them open so that you can edit. If you run this particular action, you'll only be using one click color at the default if you actually do save and close or folder, which folder actually will put it into a folder of images that you would open at a later date. Okay, so I recommend clicking None, and then we click OK. And once we click OK, it's actually going to open up the folders, the files in each folder, and it's going to run this action on them. So it's going to run all the different steps of this action on the three files that I had in there. But like I said, you can have a few dozen, depending how fast your computer is. If your computer is kind of sluggish, maybe more like five or ten at a time. If your computer is pretty fast, you might be able to do as many as, say, 30. The more photos that you're doing batch processing on, the slower your computer will get. So when you get to like 28, 29, 30, it's going to slow down a bit. You will see we've already edited um, and had it run through two photos, and it's on the third one now, and it's going through and actually doing its work on the third one. And this is actually running not only one action, but it's actually running 20 different color actions, 20 different variables that are actually all actions in the set. So you're getting 20 actions run on each picture and then turned off so that you can pick which ones you want to mix and match. So it's pretty powerful and you can see it's already done running. So we'll edit this first picture right here. 
And this one right here, this bridal is a beautiful picture. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick a couple of these and we'll play around. So to start, I'm gonna go ahead and click Desire. And actually that's beautiful. If you highlight the layer, you'll see it's got the opacity on there and we can actually increase it or decrease it. I like this pretty dramatic. So there's 80, um, 62%, the defaults at 50. And then also one click color, you're welcome to go in and adjust any of the items in one click color. If it, for example, is a little bit overexposed, you can click on that layer, it's at 0%, and you can actually increase the exposure, um, the exposure fix, which if it says fix overexposure, it will actually help bring back some of the tones in the picture and the luminosity. So you can go ahead and see we've darkened it up a bit for this one, and that's what Desire would look like. Then I'm gonna turn Desire off, and let's say we now want to see what Sentimental would look like. There's Sentimental, and again, we can play with the opacity as well of Sentimental. And to play with the opacity, you can drop down at the little arrow, or you can hover over the word opacity, left click and drag, which is the little bit quicker shortcut way. So if we wanna see our before and after, we can actually come in here and make a screenshot. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a screenshot of Sentimental, and I'm gonna make a screenshot of Desire so you can see the difference. This was our before picture. This is our after using Sentimental. And of course, one click color runs with every one of these actions. And there's our snapshot of using Desire and one click color. So you can see it's pretty dramatic difference on an already beautiful picture. You can then, once you're done using these, you can definitely come in, even if you've batch processed, and manually use any of the special effects or you could use any of the exposure enhancers. And lastly, you could end with any of the sharpening or detail finding actions. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's go ahead and look at this next picture here. And again, you'll see the before was actually this with one click color turned off, but one click color is on by default at 75%. You can always increase or decrease that. And you can also play around inside the action. So again, if we wanted, for example, protect it will help rescue any whites that um, get blown from a conversion. So in this picture, I might wanna increase those a little bit. And then I'm gonna minimize that folder and go ahead into this action and I'm going to run, again, I'm gonna try, for these both the pictures I picked, I think Desire and Sentimental are very cool looks. So there is Desire. Now let's say we wanted to mix Desire with something else. We could actually pick two or three or more actions. So I'm gonna also turn on Jenna's Sweet Shop. And it looks a little bit strong now to me. So I'm gonna decrease Jenna's Sweet Shop in opacity. So Jenna's Sweet Shop is at 18% and Desire is at 50%. And that looks like a very nice complete edit other than sharpening. Now when you're done with each of these, you'll actually just go ahead and save them. And you can save them as a PSD if you wanna maintain your layers or as a JPEG if you wanna flatten every layer and you're done completely. Next edit here, you'll see they're totally non-destructive also. Okay, the next one here is a beautiful senior photo. And with this um, woman, we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to run, um, turn on a few layers and play around a bit. So there's Rustic, which pulls out some of the deeper reds and such. Uh, peachy, I love, it's beautiful for skin tones and it also works nice because her shirt is peach. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on Vanilla Cream. And lastly, I'm gonna try Retro Surprise. Now you'll notice I have four different actions on, all at 50%, but because these are all built with adjustment layers, we can actually do more than 50% and still have it all combine. We could certainly go in here to get different looks and increase or decrease any of these layers for different looks. So that's how you can go ahead and run this action. And again, if you wanted to, you could come in and run one of the helper actions, which are called the enhancers so you'll see this is a special effect enhancer here and it looks great so that's all there is to batch processing you can again you can batch process using a small action for example like vanilla cream or you can batch process with the whole set of color actions so you know with which is the uh, color fusion mix and match so you have a lot of choices here and it's much quicker because you don't have to run every action on every photo. So thank you so much for listening to my tutorial today. This is Jody from mcpactions.com.